You just need to get you a pair of these. Oh, can I see the side? <laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of That's a Fact. Always be yourself. Know that's a word. Yeah. No, by intuition and experience, you are liberated in the freedom of your pleasure and your life. And I design joy. And that's a fact. And that's a fact. And that's a fact. And that's a fact. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome to That's a Fact. I'm your host, Kirsty Adams, and this episode is something other than the others. We have someone on the show, we have a guest on the show that has put out a message that has not only influenced his family and the women of his family, but has influenced the entire world and has gone viral. Without further ado, I want to introduce you to my guest, Mark Bryan, fashion boundary breaking, cis male, skirt wearing and high heel wearing cis male. Mark Bryan, how are you doing? I'm doing fine, thank you. Wow, such an intro. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just I'm pretty much known for wearing skirts and high heels. Uh, uh, basically, uh, a, a masculine type man that believes that. Uh, you can still maintain your masculinity and yet wear traditionally feminine type clothes, just like any woman can wear masculine type clothes and yet still be very feminine. And that's kind of my message. That's amazing. Thank you for that message. And it's something that not many people um, vouch for and live their life's purpose for, which is incredible, I think. So I will be the uh, question master and you will be the guest that will be answering and sharing and expressing in your own right what the answer is to these questions so without further ado let's commence with the questions question one is how do you identify uh him her no no not no, her no wait him he me male man where are you right now and why uh, I'm, I'm currently living in Germany. Uh, I worked for a German company uh, 10 years ago in the States for 10 years. Um, so I've been with this company now for 20 years. Uh, the last 10 have been in, the st- in Germany. Uh, before that, I traveled to Germany quite often and I met a nice German girl and ended up getting married and thus I moved to Germany. And that's why I'm here now. What is your profession? I'm a mechanical engineer, uh, but I've been focusing more on robotic packaging. Uh, So, you know, I basically uh, use my engineering degree uh, in the robotic uh, industry and stuff. So, I mean, it's 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 a very exciting job and I've been doing it for almost 30, 35 years now. Let's get down to the nitty gritty. Why skirts and heels for your daily wear? Well, I've, I've been I've been in the uh, you know the office uh, professional office environment uh, you know most of my career, and in the beginning we had to wear suits and ties, um, and that was the main the main thing that we always wore. I mean, and you know most men's suits are are black, brown, gray, navy blue, and that's really about it. And you know, other than maybe some of the jacket styles, the double-breasted or the or the, the single-breasted, there's not a whole lot of difference in the in in the in the in the clothes themselves. And then basically, your your shoes are basically either black or brown, uh, and they're basically one kind of style, and that's about it. So I mean, it's just like you know, I I was dreading um, you know getting up in the morning and putting the same same clothes on you know, almost every day. So, um, you know, I I, I was, I was, I I started wearing high heels a long time ago in college at one time. Um, And then I saw a pair of shoes that I said, okay, I got to do this. And then at that point, I just decided I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to start wearing high heels with my, with my pants at the office. And, uh, and that that kind of raised some eyebrows at first, but then people kind of got used to it. They understood, hey, it's just Mark. You know, he's, he's still the same person and stuff like that. Um, and then eventually I went, I went to, uh, you know, during the summer, 
I thought about wearing shorts with my high heels, but then I said, no, I think I'm going to wear a skirt. And ever since then, I got so many compliments that uh, I, be, I basically, since then, I've been wearing skirts and high heels almost daily now. You give across a very calm demeanor about all of this when I think a lot of people would not. Um, how did you come to terms with that? Or was it just second nature? Was it just natural to be very comfortable no matter what people say about it? I, I think for me, it's, it's very natural. I know some people struggle about what other people think about themselves. Um, but I, I guess the older you get, the, the less you really care about what, what people think. Um, I only concern myself with what my family and my close friends think. Um, you know, how, how what I do impacts their lives and stuff like that. And that's my only concern. I don't care what a, a complete stranger thinks. You know, if, if they like it, that's fine. If they don't, that's fine also. Uh, and I don't let it bother me. Uh, you know, so being out in public, you know, airports or hotels or train stations or, grocery, or you know, shopping mark, you know, sh shopping centers, stuff like that. I don't worry what people think about me, especially complete strangers that I may never see again. So why, why should I be worried about what they think? I think there's definitely a accompanying message within that that you've just said right now to exactly what you're trying to put out with what you wear every day so there's there's many things to learn from you mark brian where do you come from originally uh i'm an american i'm from from the from the state of texas um <laughs> i've lived in the dallas area before i moved to germany for 25 years mm -hmm. uh, so you could call i could call myself a dallasite uh, even though I wasn't, I was born in Texas, but I, I didn't move till to uh, Dallas until after I graduated from college. What is that word? Dallasite? A Dallasite, like a... Like a, a parasite? German, or like a, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Although I wouldn't, but, I wouldn't uh, call you, you a parasite. You don't call, you don't call yourselves a, a Dallas-onian or, or Dalliser or something like that, I guess. Um, <laughs> Yeah, uh, there's got to be something. There's got to be some kind of, you know, suffix to, you know. Yeah, and, and you know, I, <laughs> describe you know, people I, from where they come from. Yeah, I grew up. I grew up, and you know, even even in college, I hated I hated English, you know, and just and and it really shows because I've really struggled at trying to learn German while while here in Germany, and language just just isn't isn't for me, you know, and I really. I really disliked English, even in school, so. <laughs> when you started wearing skirts, you started wearing them when you were in Texas, right? No, actually, actually I just started this about five years ago. Uh, so uh, I, was, I was already living in, in Germany at that time. I've been in Germany now for almost 11 years. So it actually started uh, in Germany. Was there ever a time that you traveled back to Texas that you just that you were within the last five years? Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, I've 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 been uh, you know I've been I've been to uh, Philadelphia, Atlanta, Dallas, San Francisco, Las Vegas, uh, mm -hmm. everywhere wearing a skirt. So uh, yeah, you know, I know there's certain areas of. Um, you know, in Europe, in Europe, it's very easy because um, I think the Europeans are a little bit more tolerant uh, just because we have so many cultures mixed together that live practically inter intermingled with each other. Where, mm -hmm. in, where in the States, um, unfortunately, we're still very segregated. We have our different classes. We have our different uh, races and stuff, and they all live in their own little neighborhood type things. And so, so we're still very, you know, we're still very segregated. So there are certain areas of town, like if I go to Dallas, there's, you know, that I would avoid, I'd probably avoid, you know, even if I was wearing traditional men's clothes. Uh, but there are certain areas that, yeah. that, that, um, that I feel very comfortable, you know, going to, uh, you know, wearing a skirt to my heels. And mm. And, and that's just so unfortunate that's like that. Whereas in Europe, I feel very comfortable going just about anywhere. 
Do you think that the way that you've dressed over the last five years has just made or magnified social problems to you, to you even more? Yeah, well, I mean, I've, I've known that, you know, we've always had problems in the States, um, you know, just, just, with, just with the social, you know, show social standards and stuff. Um, but yeah, it has brought more attention to it. You know, I really didn't give it much thought because it really didn't affect what I was doing and stuff. Um, you know, it's very unfortunate, but, but you know, but now um, I do have to give it a little bit more thought and stuff about, you know, what I'm going to wear, where I'm going and, and how that relates uh, to, you know, my fashion choices. You mentioned that back in Texas or, well, now in, in Berlin, you have a family and you have a family of two daughters, one son and your wife, of course. Your two daughters, how have they been influenced by what you have decided to wear every day? Well, you know, my, both my daughters and my son, they still live in the States. So, uh -huh. um, you know, so what, what they've seen of me is either when I come visit them or what they see, you know, my pictures posted on the Internet and stuff. So uh, my daughters have been very supportive. I, I was really surprised. In fact, my youngest daughter is probably my biggest fan. You know, she, she monitors everyone that follows me. Um, and, and basically, if someone follows me, she goes through all the lists. Um, she's the one that told me that Rihanna was following me. I had no clue uh, that she was following me until my daughter told me. So, so she's really into it. She's, she's proud, of, proud to say, oh, you know, so, some of her friends at work will come up to, hey, do you see, have you seen this guy? She goes, oh, yeah, that's my dad. <laughs> no, so, so she's very good. proud of it. She's very proud of what I'm doing and, and what I stand for. Uh, mm -hmm. My oldest daughter uh, also is basically is, is very proud of what, what I represent and, and the way I go about doing things that, you know, I, I look, I try to maintain a professional type look. You know, I'm not, I don't dress trashy or anything like that. And, and, and she really enjoys that part that I look very professional in, in my appearance and that I try not to, you know, dress too, too trashy or sexy or something like that. So have you ever attempted sexy? Like you say, you try to not, but have you ever attempted it? Uh, <laughs> Most of, you know, I, I, you know, people always, you know, I always say, oh, you look so sexy, you know, and I'll reply, it's not my intention. It's just the result to some, to some, right. some people think it's, mm -hmm. it's not really my intention. Uh, but, but I do favor the tighter skirts that, that, you know, others can interpret it as, as being sexy. I just interpret it as looking good. Uh, you know, that I, th I think I look better in a tighter skirt than I would a looser skirt. And mm -hmm. some people may regard that as being sexy or something. I, I try not to associate with what I do to anything sexual. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, it's the same way with like, you know, the, the taller, the, like the stiletto heels. Um, you know, a lot of people say, oh, they're just sexy. But to me, I find them very uh, fashionable. And, 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 what they, and what they do to you is, is very empowering so what is your most empowering heel of all time do you have it here around or can you describe it to us um uh, actually you know the my uh, you know I, occasionally i wear like some five inch heels which uh, you know uh, 112 centimeter uh heel uh which is about the maximum which is the maximum that, that I can that I can wear fairly comfortable, you know, mm -hmm. I can walk in. I won't say they're comfortable, but I, but I can at, at least kind of, you know, wobble around in them a little bit and, and still uh, look look fairly confident in what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. uh, but my favorite one is probably just a four inch stiletto, just your basic uh, four inch stiletto. This is probably my favorite go to type shoe. Do you get all those pains that, you know, women would usually complain about or have you figured out a way of hacking the system? 
Well, you know, people say, well, you, you, your back is going to hurt, your knees are going to hurt, your joints hurt. I don't have that problem. I, I guess maybe because I go to the gym, you know, t- three times a week and stuff. And, and I do a lot of glute exercises and stuff that strengthens the back. Um, and, I, and I've got fairly muscular legs, so my legs don't get tired standing in the hills. I do feel the discomfort in the balls of my feet. Um, uh, but, you know, I, com- I combat that with, uh, you know, some, some gel pads. You know, I, I do sneak a pair of gel pads in the, in the bottom of the shoes. And, and also, I think I have a little bit of high tolerance for pain, or for, not really for pain, but for discomfort and stuff. So, so that makes it a little bit more <clears throat> tolerable that, I, that I'm able to tolerate a little bit better. So, yeah. Um, and, and then, you know, I also schedule my days where if I know I'm going to do a lot of standing or walking, I'll wear a lower heel. Um, and, and the days that I know I can sit behind a desk or just be in meetings all day, I'll wear the higher heel. Sounds like you were built for this, basically. You were built for heels, unlike, you know, the people that are often targeted with heels, which are women. <laughs> but I guess we can take a tip from you in terms of, you know, just padding the heels a bit a bit more which is your favorite shoe brand <laughs> i saw this in your list of questions and i go that, you know, that's, gonna be, <laughs> that's, that's gonna be very difficult because um you know i'm, I'm kind of like a representative for for several brands because i really haven't chosen just one i mean every one of them has their pluses and minuses um uh, you know i have a uh, uh, louboutin shoes um, which I have a really good deal with them. Also, I have Jimmy Choo shoes. Mm. Uh, I have uh, Chara shoes in, in the Boston area in the USA, and then a, a few shoe, a few other shoe brands. Uh, so, so to really narrow it down to to just one brand, it, it's 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 I, I can't do it because I like them all. <laughs> I know it's a challenge. I wouldn't be able to pinpoint <laughs> either. <laughs> Especially listening to your list of brands right there. We're talking about, we, we spoke about, you know, how your body has been literally, in my eyes, um, to be precise, your body's been built for heels um, to be able to withstand the pain. Um, I guess women are also, you know, built for higher pain threshold, but yours in particular seems to withstand it a lot. And I think that's something really powerful and it speaks to your it speaks to your makeup, it speaks to your biology. So with that said, what is your idea of masculinity? To me, masculinity is just being myself, Uh, Mm -hmm. just doing what I feel comfortable doing. Uh, If that's doing macho things, if I'm, if I need to be a macho moment, then, uh, you know, then then it is, but uh, it's really just being yourself and who you are uh, and not trying to pretend that you're some, that, you know, like, like you're toxic masculine or you're, or you're very feminine or something and just be yourself. And, mm-hmm. you know, being, uh, being th- of the male gender, uh, being myself, I guess, would be considered too many as, as being masculine. Fashion week. We have spoken before about how you've got quite a bit of a he- busy time ahead of you because of fashion week please tell us about that and what it has taught you so far well this you know uh this will actually be my first fashion week because uh my popularity uh was basically i was a nobody uh this time last year <laughs> uh, you know this time last year i only had i only had 200 followers so uh so you know i, I missed fashion week uh, you know i just came on you know i got popular uh, you know, right at the end of it. Um, so this will be my first fashion week, but, you know, I've already learned a lot, uh, you know, d- during during the 10 months leading up to this about how the fashion industry works. And, and, uh, and it's been very eye-opening because, you know, I'm surrounded by a bunch of, bunch of uh, people that are just have a totally different outlook on life than say in my engineering field, and stuff like that, and it's 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 really been like a second life, uh, you know, learning new people and learning a different mindset uh, on how life goes on and stuff like that. 
and that's been, that's been very fun, and I've, I've really enjoyed it. Um, the Fashion Weeks, basically, you know, I'm, I'm doing a red carpet event uh, this Saturday night. Uh, so, I, you know, I've had to prepare for, and basically, if it's come styled as you are, uh, <laughs> as you want, you, you're not, you know, they're not going to have a stylist there with some clothes that, hey, we want you to wear this. So, uh, so I've had to do some last minute shopping because I needed to get a little bit more higher end. Uh, you know, a little bit more designer type clothing and stuff. And, uh, you know, you can't wait till the last minute to do things like I, like I did. And, you know, you spent, you order things and then they come in and they're wrong. So, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, one of the things I learned is, is, uh, you know, once you, once you get the invitation to go shopping early, um, uh, you know, so, um, so yeah, I mean, and then I, you know, I've got the. This is for Berlin, the Berlin Fashion Week, uh, this weekend, um, and then I'll have a few weeks bet- before I go to the Paris Fashion Week. That's exciting. I almost wish we had this conversation post Fashion Week so we could get a feedback. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe maybe you do a follow up. Maybe we can do a follow up. <laughs> <laughs> I find that Fashion Week is always innovating with fashion, um, introducing, you know, different types of designs and, you know, cross, cross blending fashion for different identities. So with that said, what do you think is the future of menswear? Well, you know, I think we're always going to have gendered clothing uh, as much as much as it is because just the, 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 the female body and the male body are completely different. You know, w- women have, you know, breasts and hips and, and stuff like that where men, you know, don't. So, so the clothes are going to be a little bit different. They're always going to be uh, designed for women and stuff. And I think the unisex clothing is just going to be too non- non-forming and stuff. And just basically, it's, they're not going to look good. Uh, you know, even, even though they're for both sexes, they, they have to, you know, they have to kind of smooth out the, the curves and, mm-hmm. and stuff where they, they won't look so good. You know, they won't look so bad on a man, but they won't look so good on a woman either. So, uh, but as far as the, the fashion, you know, I think, you know, uh, you know, the, some of the bigger brands have been pushing, you know, skirts on men. And so, I mean, you can go back, look at a lot of the Paris Fashion Weeks and you'll see, you know, some brands and stuff that have men wearing skirts or heels or something like that, you know, on the runways themselves yeah. uh, or just skirts and, and men's type shoes. Um, and most of the men, you know, aren't wearing stilettos or anything like that. Uh, <clears throat> but the, I, I, the, what I see wrong with that is that, you know, they're, they're trying to push uh, gender, gender neutral clothing and stuff that anyone could wear what they want to wear. Uh, but most of the male, most of the male models that, that they're using are very feminine type, you know, male models. Uh, yeah. So, so, you know, someone that's like myself, I look at it and I go, well, I don't want to be associated with a very feminine type, you know, man that, that, you know, they're, they're basically pushing feminine, you know, femininity. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, even even though they're men, you know, they're saying, oh, well, you, you can only you can only be feminine and wear these type of clothes. Uh, mm-hmm. and, and that's the message where I think uh, in the future that I think that part's going to change where they'll use a little bit more uh, masculine type men like myself, maybe, uh, you know, uh, maybe in, 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 the, yeah, in these future shows, <laughs> you know, no, I'm not, I'm not scheduled for any runway walks. So, okay. Yeah. But, but I think, I think that's going to be the, um, how, how the men's fashion is going to go where, where, you know, men can wear skirts and still maintain their masculinity and stuff. So instead of just being limited to, you know, film, uh, feminine type men. Mm -hmm. Between men and women. And I say men and women specifically because you speak about it in such, you know, binary form. So I'm just going to go with that and um, (laughs) nothing wrong with that. (laughs) Um, I think we obviously, you know, stem from historical ways of, you know, shaping fashion. So 
for that sake, let's say between women and men, who do you think are the most fashionably free? Well, you know, you know, my, my first response to that question was that, of, of course, women are. Uh, but, you know, be, being, um, you know, getting a better look into the, the fashion industry, there's a lot of men out there that are very fashion conscious, too, uh, whether it be men's style or something. But, I, you know, even when I was wearing men's clothes, I always wanted to have the nicest suit and the and, uh, you know, so I, so I even when I was wearing men's clothes, uh, I still wanted to look, you know, good and make an impression on what I was wearing and stuff. So uh, but I, I think overall, I think women uh, tend to pay attention more to uh, what's fashionable and what's not uh, compared to men. And I think that's I think that's going to change because. Um, as I stated, you know, as I stated before, that. You know, most men's clothes are, are very boring. Um, and, you know, some of these designers are starting to add more colors, add more patterns and stuff to the men's clothes. Right. And, and I think at that point, you know, once that happens, I think men will start paying a little bit more attention uh, to their fashion choices because they have more choices. A lot of people will say that, you know, the two styles are merging together to form one, you know, from woman to man or man to woman style. Um, because, you know, we're trying to invite more freedom of expression, which I think is exactly what you're doing. So um, also what's interesting about this, <laughs> this fashion or this binary thinking of fashion is that, you know, there are some kinds of styles that have been developed specifically for women and some specifically for men. And, the irony is that heels were actually made for men in the beginning. So would you, um, I mean, we can obviously talk hours and hours about the history of, you know, where it all started, Persian history, where you want to go. But in short, would you say you specifically are bringing back history in terms of men's fashion? Or was it simply just a natural gravitation towards that style? Well, I wouldn't say I specifically uh, am leading the charge on men wearing high heels uh, because, uh, you know, as, as, as you stated, that the Persians, I think, were the ones that first came up with the idea of wearing uh, high heels for the further uh, soldiers, uh, you know, riding horses and stuff. And, and it's been, you know, it's true that, you know, through the history, you know, men, men did wear heels, uh, you know, long before women did. I think women were actually outlawed to wear heels, I guess, uh, for, for some time. Um, and the reason why I don't think I'm going to, I'm going to be the one that pushes it because I basically wear stiletto heel most of the time. Um, and, you know, if, if I was a big proponent of wearing like a block heel, uh, you know, in an Oxford type shoe or something, and and that's what people knew me for. Then I would say yes, I would be pushing, you know, the agenda for men or or making it acceptable for men to wear heels. But since I basically focus on the stiletto, which were basically designed specifically for women, um, then I really don't think what I do. Uh, I, th I think maybe I, I can have an influence, but. It's not, be, it's not because of what I'm wearing. It's because, it's because I am, the fact, wearing heels. It's not the style of shoe that I'm wearing. It's just that I'm just wearing heels, mm. and, and people are very accepting of that. But, mm. the, but the specific shoe that I wear, I don't think is going to generate as much interest if it was just, say, a, a block heel or a block boot, you know, a boot with a small heel on it or something. So yeah. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> That does make sense. I can see um, in which you've, you've been very specific about what you're wearing and how historically, you know, it can't really apply because it was more of an evolution of the heel. Um, and that evolution you've taken into your own um, wardrobe and, and I guess continued the evolution. That's how I mm -hmm. see it. <laughs> yeah. um, and I think being able to do that in such a way that is 
I mean, by now you would know it's non-conventional, but to be able to do it in such a way, basically, you know, highlights the heel as quite a powerful piece of work. Mm -hmm. And by doing so, by, by wearing it the way you're wearing it, you are attracting many aficionados and connoisseurs on the heel, like Louboutin, um, to be able to flaunt it. And yep. I think at the end of the day, everyone is, lo everyone is looking for someone to represent whatever they put out um, as confidently as possible. And that's what I see from you. Yeah, I mean, I think that's, I think that's the big thing is that you got to have the confidence. If you're going to wear something like what I wear, you have to have the confidence. And it, it's, it's kind of like a, it's kind of like a, um, it's kind of like a snowball because basically once you gain the confidence to wear like like a high like a high stiletto like a four inch or ten centimeter uh, type stiletto heel, uh, that gives you confidence, uh, and and uh, and actually actually the shoe itself, um, you know it you know for me for me wearing the shoe gives me confidence. Um, it actually gives me more confidence than what I've already had, uh, just because. Uh, People look at you and wow, that that guy's really confident in what he's wearing and stuff, and he looks mm -hmm. like he's confident. And I think that's what yeah. attracted. I think that's what kind of attracted me to the stiletto heel was every time I saw a woman uh, wearing a you know a stiletto heel, you know, she looked very confident to me and very empowered and and stuff like that. You know, people say, oh, she looks sexy, but to me, I saw the empowerment and and the confidence it gave that woman. Uh, you know, wearing these heels. Yeah. It kind of reminds me of, you know, the sonic impact that heels have as well. You know, I mean, I think, I think heels are the loudest shoes <laughs> aside from <laughs> tap shoes. <laughs> but how do you feel with that sound, you know, traveling with you the whole time? I don't mind it. You know, it actually draws attention, you know, when, when you're walking, you know, on the tiled floor or something like that. You know, and you first, like of all, you gotta be, first of all, you got to be careful because, <laughs> you know, uh, but, but, you know, it actually draws some attention where, you know, um, I'm not saying I like the attention. Sometimes I want to go kind of unnoticed and just kind of hopefully I just want to blend in with, you know, eventually, hopefully that's the idea that it becomes mm -hmm. normal that where people, uh, you know, see me or something. They think, oh, well, that's just, that's just, you know, guy wearing high heels and, but you know, it, it does turn a lot of heads, you know, even, even me, if, if I'm standing somewhere and I hear the distinctive sound of high heels, I'll look up to see, you know, you know, who's coming or what, what, what is she wearing? You know? So, so I think when people look up, when they hear me coming and they look up, I think some of them are kind of surprised that they see a man wearing, wearing heels and making that kind of sound. <laughs> I think what you'll, mission and your message does is to um is simply to encourage people to be i think um to be and to be what you naturally gravitate towards about you know when you were talking about the heels i was thinking you know the next time next when i get my first louboutins i'll be sure to tag you okay. in that picture <laughs> that's a deal okay <laughs> okay yeah sure. um and I think we can circle down to the last question at this point, which is, would you ever go back to just wearing pants and so-called men's shoes? Well, you know, you know, I, I get asked that, you know, a lot, you know, do I still wear, you know, pants and, and, and normal, you know, men's shoes and stuff, you know, I, and my, my response is I can't wear a skirt and, and high heels 24 seven, you know, I'll still, I'll still wear, you know, I'll still wear some jeans and, you know, occasionally, and I'll wear sneakers or something like that. Uh, but as far as, um, as far as wearing like a business type of men's business type suit, um, I will, if it, if it, you know, if it's, if it's uh, appropriate for the occasion, like if I'm meeting some new customers or something, and they're not aware of what I wear, I'm not going to walk into a meeting and shock everybody. Uh, because mm -hmm. I want people to focus on what the meeting's about and not what I'm wearing. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so, so there are times that I wear, um, 
you know, to, I'll, I'll still wear my suit and, and shoes to the office uh, just because, you know, I'm there, I'm there to conduct business and not to, you know, uh, you know, shock people and stuff. Uh, but, you know, I do, I do have a lot of people that, that know what I wear and stuff like that. And at that point, you know, I, I, I wear the skirt and high heels. Mm -hmm. And so you shall commence. <laughs> <laughs> and we love it. We love it. And the fact that you're just flaunting it is just mighty inspiration for many that would like to do exactly the same. So yeah, thank yeah you for it, just, it just becomes a simple fashion choice. I mean, it, you know, uh, you know, I, I try to state that it's not for sexual reasons. A lot, a lot of people will will wear what I wear for sexual reasons and stuff, and and that's okay. You know, if, they, if that's if that's why they choose to wear, uh, you know, clothes from another gender because of, because you know it's it's a sexual thing, then that's fine. I have no I have no problem with that. But you know, for me, for me, it's it's more just the fashion choices and the freedom to wear what I feel comfortable in. And I feel very comfortable. I, I don't feel any different putting on a skirt or, or wearing a pair of pants. I feel the same. It doesn't change one bit who I am. The pumps do change me. You know, when I wear a high heel, it does because, because it, gives, it gives me more confidence when I'm, when I'm wearing it. So, so the pumps do, pumps do give me a different feeling. It, it actually gives me uh, a little bit more confidence. Well, I can totally resonate. I mean, I'm wearing sneakers right now. And I know that if I walk out of here with heels, then I'm going to feel like, you know, the person that I want to be, the person that I want to present to others yeah. in order to, you know, inspire them to be confident too. And I think um, that is definitely the circle or the, the cycle that we should be, you know, cultivating in this yeah. society. Thank you, Mark, for a wonderful conversation yeah. about your about your message i don't even want to call it fashion i just want to call it a message and, well, and, and it, it, it should be it should be just you know a message that a person should be comfortable wearing what they want to wear you know if they want yeah. to wear men's clothes be, just be comfortable doing it if you want to wear women's clothes be comfortable doing it uh doesn't matter you know what gender you are just be comfortable wearing what you want to wear you know you mm -hmm. like wearing sneakers i like wearing stilettos so just be comfortable with, with what you're doing <laughs> and, 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 and just go with it. Nothing more, nothing less. Exactly. <laughs> Thank you, Mark. It's been such Thank an you. honor having you on this show. And I just, I know that not just me, but a lot of people are going to walk away just rethinking what, what it means to be confident because um, a lot of people attach it to clothing, but they should rather attach to their being. We're leading into the traditional affirmation stage of the show where we state affirmations about yourself or to the world. I'll lead us into the affirmation stage. And what I'd like to say is that I am me and whatever I decide to be is powerful. And that's a fact. Okay. Over My to turn you, Mark. <laughs> well, uh, you know, I, I enjoy wearing high heels and skirts almost daily. Um, and, and this is probably one of the better interviews I've ever had. And that's a fact. Aww. And it's a fact. Wow. And that's a fact. <laughs>